Aloha in our day Spread a little aloha around the world And breakfast with Bob Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome, everybody, back to Breakfast with Bob, the Not Quite Kona Edition. My name is Bob Abbott. We're brought to you by Hoka One One. Master Spas, Clash USA, You Can Hyper Ice, Premium Plus Sports, Form Smart Swim Goggles, and, of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation during COVID we sent out. 3,038 grants, totaling $5.1 million to keep challenged athletes in the game of life through sport. Our next guest is it's almost time for the Herbalife Triathlon uh, LA coming up on October 24th. We have, oh, I don't know, one of the most decorated female triathletes in history, four-time Wildflower champion, five-time Ironman champion, 12-time Ironman 70.3 champion, three-time top five at Ironman World Championship, Silver and bronze at Ironman 70.3 World Championship. And, of course, Escape from Alcatraz champion Heather Jackson joins us. <laughs> hey, <Bob>. And Brennan. <laughs> I know, and me, but I, I, but I love it. It's real fun to hear, I mean, just so many awards, you know, that you've received, Heather. I mean, it's just beautiful. So thank you for being who you are. And that was just page one. Yeah. I, could, I could keep going and going and we get back into <laughs> hockey and Princeton and get all that stuff. But no. So Heather, when you talk about Ironman and 70.3 and all the long distance stuff, when you look at an event like uh, Herbalife LA, which you did in 2019, that's a sprint, that's an Olympic distance race. That's short for you. That's like a cocktail weenie. Talk, talk. <laughs> what do you order. get as a top pro triathlete from a shorter distance race? And why is that important to your training and racing? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I actually love the shorter distance races more personally. I mean, if I had to swim, which I don't have that quality swim that some of those ITU short course um, racers have, I would probably have focused purely on the short course. I just love it. I mean, I love just going all out um, from the gun. And if I could race at the highest level in that style, I would have done that over, say, the longer distance. I just need the eight hours to make up my swim <laughs> deficit. But <laughs> to, I mean, <laughs> races like LA or Black 24 try, um, I love it. I mean, I'm like super excited to get there and toe the line with some of those short courses and just, yeah, go all out for a couple hours. Well, in a lot of the races you do, you're in, you know, sort of, uh, what I call off Broadway, you know, you're in Placid, you're in Chattanooga. This is downtown LA. You're starting at Venice beach and you're riding across, you're basically riding across the gut of the city and finishing down at the, uh, uh, at LA live and Staples center. How fun is it to be in a major city doing a triathlon? I think it's amazing. I mean, it's super fun. LA is cool. Like I've spent some time there. Wadi, my husband is from there. So um, I spent a few years there. We lived down kind of South Bay area. And, but when I was training there, then obviously the roads aren't closed down, like you're in the middle of a city. And so to be able to ride on closed roads through the middle of downtown LA, is just super cool. I mean, it's a whole different look at the city. You drive those roads, you like, I'll go visit the Herbalife offices at Herbal LA live and I mean, now you get to ride your bike down these streets. So it's super, super cool. Talk a little bit about Herbalife for a second, because a lot of times athletes have sponsors that last a year or two. You, Herbalife has been a partner of yours for a long time. And they've obviously, you, you have a, part, a real partnership. Talk a little bit about, about that partnership. Yeah, I mean, I literally wouldn't be where I am without Herbalife. And I'm, yeah, I'm so grateful for them reaching out over 12 years ago now, I had wow. barely any results. I hadn't done much. Um, I had just happened to meet a couple of um, the early, early founders of the Herbalife 24 line, John and Casey at, it might've been LA Try actually. Yep. Um, I literally a uh, first or second year pro, uh, barely done anything. And we, Wadi and I just hung out with them. We had no idea their connection with Herbalife or anything. And then we got an email um, saying, Oh, we'd love to chat with you about partnering. And we were like, Oh yeah. Right. Like, Oh my, like, you know, who are we? And they're like, we'd like to invite you to our downtown office. And Wadi are like, what? Like, Oh my God, what should we wear? We, you know, we're fully tatted, just like not very corporate-y. And we showed up and we're like, we had a meeting in the main boardroom. This would have been, yeah, I think 
2010 or 11. And we walked out of there like, oh man, we definitely did not get that. <laughs> and then we got an email like a week later, like, oh, you guys are amazing. We'd love to partner with you. And literally Herbalife has been by my side the last 12 years of my career. Um, and not just the people at the top that support me. Um, it's all the distributors globally, like that are at, they come out to races to cheer me on. I have my own like Herbalife cheer squad at most races I go to. And so for me, it's huge. It's like, they don't care my results. They don't, they just love to be part of the journey. And it's been a huge part of my triathlon career for sure. I remember years ago, I was representing Lucas Verzbikas and he was part of Herbalife and he went to do some race in Mexico somewhere. And it was like hundreds of Herbalife supporters all wearing Lucas shirts. And he was just <laughs> blown away. The community, you don't realize wherever you go in the world, there's Herbalife people. It's crazy. I mean, and you don't even, I don't even know about it. They find out I'm going to be at a race. And then all of a sudden I'm, you know, in the middle of the run and I see hundreds of go Heather t-shirts and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> Thank you. Guys. It's, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's huge. Yeah. Lucas was one of those first years um, early yeah. on too. <laughs> so Brennan, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, putting on a race in a major city across a major city. When Herbalife 24 and you guys first started chatting about, hey, we want to, in 2019, we are going to rejuvenate this event and we are going to, we're going to go across the city and you've, this year, you got 40,000 in prize money, but the complications of putting on, because let me just go through what you're doing. You got the 2021 USA Triathlon West Regional Championship. You've got a sprint try. Again, you're starting at Venice Beach. You're riding to LA live through this, through the downtown LA. You've got a sprint relay. You've got an international. You've got a, uh, a 5K walk where every penny of that's going to juvenile diabetes, which is awesome. You've got an aqua bike international sprint. Oh, plus a 22 mile bike tour. What the hell? I mean, do you, do you sleep at all? What, what, do, how do you do all this? And it's not, again, you're not out in Podunk. You're in LA, it's the city, the county, the beaches. I can't even imagine the complications. Four to seven million people, you know, that want to get around. So yeah, it's, it's really fun. But I mean, evidently I like challenges, you know, on things. And so as we, as we all do, but, you know, we started planning on this, I think it was back in 2016. So it really took us three years to get it for the 2019 edition. And like you said, it is crazy. It is a challenge, but it's also really exciting when it comes to fruition. And, you know, I think it's just an amazing time to, you get to see the city, like Heather was saying, with the streets are closed and the scale of the city becomes much more personal on that when you can be on a bike, going by buildings and communities and just zipping around and seeing things. And it's really quiet, which when you're in your car, you have a radio on or something like that. And so when it's 8 a.m. on a Sunday morning, you really have this great race experience. And so, yes, it's difficult. You know, it's 22 miles, closed streets of the second largest city in the United States, you know, <laughs> so. but fortunately with, you know, I'd say LAPD and LAD to DOT is they're so well coordinated. We can close it and then open it up rather quickly on it. And then, you know, thinking about all the categories is we want to really create this as a day to tour Los Angeles. Because, you know, we have triathletes, which we know is a huge amount of people, but in the reality of it, it's small with runners and bikers. So we said, hey, let's get in this 5K run so people can run downtown and then add in this bike tour, which, you know, the LA Marathon used to have something like that with 15,000 people. And our yeah. goal over time. I get it. It was wonderful. Back. Oh, yeah. No, I, I produced that for a couple of years and I can't wait to really, you know, bring that back because we're working with Bahati Foundation and Eastside Riders Bicycle Club to actually bring in, you know, a lot of these, you know, kids and parents that haven't been able to really go out and experience triathlon. And then we're going to build that up. So hopefully with USA cycling criteriums next year, we'll see. Um, so you want to add more next year? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah well, I mean, we're, building, we're building up to, to the Olympics and, you know, I think through the pandemic, we all saw that there's so much that we can do and bikes, you know, especially as everybody's just had this rediscovery of these two wheels. And so how do we really provide more opportunities for people? So that's what, wow. that's what I do is I provide opportunities. So talk a little bit about how many, just some of the numbers, how many, how many roads are you blocking? How many police are you using? 
because uh, it's one thing to do an, an out and back course is yeah. it's way easier. You're doing bike racks for how many people you're thinking? How many thousands? Yeah, we'll, ha- we'll have about 1,500 triathletes out there, another wow. 1,500 um, 5K runners, you know, the aqua bikers and all those other the other types. But, you know, I'll probably be an aqua Everything. biker. You know, you know, a couple hundred in there. And then the bike tour, we're limiting to 500 this year. It's really, I'd say, proof of concept, you know, but over time, I'd yeah. love to get it to that 5,000 with, I'd say, criterium, time trial, all sorts of different stuff. I, I like that a lot. Uh, it's roads, police. What, there's a there's a lot there's a lot of them. I got to say, but again, it's, <laughs> it's 22 miles. So I say there's only two events that close down LA. You got LA Marathon and then Herbalife 24 Try. And so I think there's over 200 police. There's probably at least 100. I would say LA DOT engineers out there. Um, I don't know the linear footage of cones, bike rack barricades, K rail, and all that, but I do know it adds up in our expense column. <laughs> so it, it does actually, you know, it, but, it, but it works. You know, there's a lot of lines of tapes and barricades and just everyone working to make sure it's safe for all the riders. And with this, I, I, after the COVID, I, I feel like we're heading into a golden age of events where people are just hungry to race and they're not thinking, oh, I won't do it this year. I'll do it next year. Who knows what's going to happen next year? You better race now. <laughs> <laughs> so people are signing up. We saw it at Malibu this weekend. We're yep. seeing full corrals wherever we go. Can one, it's herbalife 24 tryla for people to yep. sign up. And is registration's open for everything still? Yeah, registration's open. You know, returning is going to be a great group out there. And I think you're right, is people are hungry, you know, not necessarily to get together, but to get that experience. You know, the feeling is what we're you know, we've been missing, you know, just because we've all been like in these screens, you know, trying to get out. And so when you finally get there, but you know, we've had three events, you know, today, you know, two triathlons and one 5k and just people are excited to have that energy. Right. So okay. it's, you know, but whether it's like the pros and elites to have that competitive aspect in it, or just to get out and have a personal accomplishment, every, everybody's hungry for it. So Heather, when you look at, uh, you know, 2019 was a great year for you. And then when the whole world shuts down in 2020, how tough was it for you to adapt to the fact that, okay, we're, we're not going to be racing at all? Because as, as a pro athlete, your schedule is set. You know where you're going, what race you're doing, and then it's nothing. How difficult was it for you to, to deal with this? Yeah, it was, I mean, as anyone probably agrees, it was definitely a tough year of just like, okay, what is going on? Um, and so, yeah, it was that constant, like, Will we race? Will we not? I think that was the hardest part of last year. Um, I think for me last year, 2020 was we, my husband, Wadi and I, and a couple of close friends who we were kind of like quarantining with, um, made the most of it, just trying to ride gravel bikes, get out, do some things we hadn't done. Um, just with really high intense training, like every single year. So that was, that was good. But then I, for me personally, I think this year has been a little bit tougher for me just coming off of a year of no racing and then what you're talking about with the um races themselves of like i want to race everything out there because we hadn't been racing and you right. don't know if something's going to get canceled again so i just kept signing the whole start of the year it was like i, I don't care i'm going to do this one i don't care i'm going to go to this one and it so it set up a bit of a different year for me of just usually i'm very systematic r- what races i do do they suit me um things like that. And then this year it's just been free for all <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so with, when you get second at the, uh, at the Herbalife 24 LA in 2019, I'm guessing you're pretty happy with that because it's not like you really have anything gauge on because you hadn't really done any other short races. Oh my God. I was so stoked. I, that was one of my most favorite races of 19 because there were some really top girls there, Sarah Haskins, Alicia. Yeah. Um, and I was just, I went into it like, okay, let's see how I, how close can I stay to them? So to be able to even be up there, I was like, oh, this is great. (laughs) So, so Brennan, it's one thing when you, when you bring the event back after a number of years and it happens in 2019, then you're sort of sitting by the phone afterwards or by the computer waiting for the backlash. You know, the the guy who couldn't get to church, the the people who's, you know, couldn't get out of their driveway. What was the response from the city? Because I'm sure the city looks at these things year to year. And yep. goes, okay, what was the impact, positive, negative, and is it worth continuing to do this? What was the, the feedback afterwards at 19? 
We, we actually had really good feedback. And so, I mean, my main goal, you know, I live in Venice. And so I, I dealt with some of the ramifications, you know, the, the previous operators. So my goal was extensive outreach, go on schedule and get the roads open as quickly as possible. And, you know, in 2019, we definitely delivered, you know, so it's like really we had a systematic, I would say it's a military operation where you're pulling out your team, you know, so the streets can get open as quickly as possible. But it went really well. The city was very happy. And I think it's going to, it was a good, I'd say, training for 2028. So it's a lot of these, you know, teams within LAPD and DOT need to be ready for all of this because we're going to be descended upon, you know, by hundreds of thousands of people here in just, you know, seven years. So when they do two transition areas for a 70.3 or a full Ironman and people finish the swim and they leave their stuff in their little bag, people, they've got hours to get that stuff back, right? To, to, the, to the finish line. You're doing a, you know, for sprinters, they're going to be out there for an hour and 20 minutes and you've got to get that swim stuff for, you know, for all these people and you've got to get it back quickly. And again, they, they, the roads aren't open. So you got to drive around to get to the Staples or LA Live. How difficult, it sounds like a D-Day invasion, trying to get all those trucks together and get everything there. You're making my job sound very difficult, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, we actually have a, a, not necessarily sophisticated, but a well thought out, you know, process for this because we always look at it, you know, what makes it easy for, I'd say the customer, which is the triathlete out there. Cause all they want to do is race. So you yes. want to drop, a, you want to drop your bag somewhere. And then like when you're at the airport, it's like, oh, here's my bag. <laughs> so we actually have created a system like that with all these trucks, as they're saying, box trucks, the team that picks them up and transports them to get them down there. So by 8.30, when the finishers are coming in, you know, their bags actually can be picked up, you know? So we've got a dry bag, which is your morning bag. So you can change out of your clothes and then a wet T1 bag, which you can grab whenever. So just don't forget them because 2019, I ended up with maybe 25 to 30 wet T1 bags, which don't weather well, you know, after a while. So please, so everyone newer, listening, yeah, don't forget. One of the new relationships is the Pro Triathletes Organization. Uh, mm -hmm. They've been, they've done a lot for the sport. They put a ton of money in, they created yep. Collins cup maternity leave. I, I love what they've added to the sport. And I'm sure Heather does as well as, you know, they basically paid pro triathletes for that year. They couldn't race for their ranking from the year before, which was, and then they did it again. Yeah. So for you, they've also, have they become a little bit of a partner where they're putting up some additional prize money? Yeah, it's, re it's really exciting, you know, and, you know, speaking, you know, outside looking in with the professional athletes, but it's great that the attention and the support is finally there because we all, you know, in this industry, we know how difficult it is for these athletes, you know, to survive and thrive and train, you know, within this. And it's like, we have to take care of, I say, our heroes so they can really keep doing what they're doing. Yep. And so PTO, as you know, has really reached out, you know, internationally. And this year they've, you know, doubled our prize purse, you know, as well as, you know, told their athletes, please come, it's going to be great. And then we're looking at a more long-term partnership with them in developing a pro-am division, as well as some more experiences around with both the professionals, as well as our age group athletes. Because, you know, for the longest time, it's been grassroots events, you know, or Ironman, you know, it's really been that kind of world. And now it's like, hey, there's this medium where we can now connect all these different people. So, so you'll have 40K in prize money. We have 40K in prize money. We've got a great list of athletes we're going to release in October, but we're upwards of, I think, 55, you know, uh, professional athletes coming out. So excited. You know, I'm always, I'm a fanboy, so I always get to watch, yeah. love watching people race. So, well, you can, you can tell us, nobody's really going to be watching. So yeah. you just tell us who Heather's going to have to worry about. So I don't want the cherry picking going on right now as people are always like, well, I, <laughs> you know, I want, I want people to commit and then they've got to, you know, do it. So, yes. So Heather, during the midst of all this, I think you would switch coaches to Ryan Bolton um, this last year. Is that, are you still with Ryan? And what are you guys gearing up for? You know, now that it looks like the I mean, Ironman World Championship now has been designated for May 7th and St. George, which is a course you do well on. Um, and then there'll be a, the, that's a 2021. And then 2022 will be back in Kona, which is obviously one of your favorite places because you've done so well there. Are you, are you working with Ryan and what's the plan now leading in? Um, I'm actually um, still cl still close with Ryan, um, kind of on a little bit of a, a hiatus right now, just after um, Placid and Timberman, I just kind of needed a reset. Um, it took yep. like two or three weeks, um, just kind of clear the mind. Uh, it coincided with a couple other personal things, um, just 
family things that I went back to New Hampshire for. And then um, Kona was canceled. So it was kind of this weird kind of couple of weeks for me of, okay, yeah. what now? And it was um, for me kind of deciding, okay, will February Kona happen? And if so, how can I be ready for February? So originally I was going to just take a break um, kind of this time frame, um, and then build back in for Herbalife 24 try, do some halves, get my speed up before going into a long Ironman block, November, December, um, leading into February. So I'm very grateful that, um, the Feb February Kona date has already been shifted so that we know because otherwise, um, like Crazy. people plan their schedule now, yeah. um, to be ready for a full distance. I mean, those are a bit harder to really plan out. You're starting big blocks further out. So I'm grateful that has already been shifted. And so I have now shifted my plan again, um, this season. Originally I was planning on doing some more halves this year. Um, but now the plan is to, I'll be at Herbalife 24, um, LA, and then I'll head for Ironman, um, Arizona. I wish Arizona. That's my favorite. Um, Ironman Florida, November 6th Mm. to try to get my slot, um, for next October because our slots for Kona, um, count for the May, May world champs. So, um, I'll try to solidify a slot, um, for next October, um, on November 6th, there's, it's a women's only field in Florida and there's two slots. So that'll be the rest of my season, Herbalife 24, and then Ironman Florida, hopefully get it. Um, otherwise I'll take a break in the holidays, which I always love to do the last couple of years. It's been tough, not what's going on. So, um, yeah, take a little bit of an off season, enjoy the hol- the holidays with my family. And then Jan 1st, start building towards May 7th. And then just one week later, um, I believe it is Herbalife 24 again. So, Oh, that's right. And so, yeah, so <laughs> Brennan with, uh, with the partnership with PTO, they will be even more involved with for your May event next year. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, they, they are. And I mean, Heather brings up a good point because it's similar like planning for an event from a race director perspective and from a, and from a professional athlete or even age group is you need a planning window. And suddenly, you know, come June, it was like, okay, events can happen here in California. So we had these like three month planning windows for these events, which was insane. Crazy. So, but yeah, I mean, right after this in October, we'll be right back here again in May. You know, I think it's the 15th or 16th. I can't actually think straight right now. And uh, yeah, but we're planning with PTO is probably going to start, you know, October 25th, you know, so what we're going to be doing in these different divisions, but they're really keen on, you know, what they can do again from the professional athlete, but also to make a presence, you know, within, I'd say the audience of the U S and the world with, you know, professional athletes, I I would say there are heroes and it's fun at this time. We always need inspiration, you know, yes. and that's what we get, you know, even with CAF athletes, you know, professional athletes, you know, people are hungry for this as we're, you know, you know, in sometimes our mundane world. Love it. So we've got the Herbalife 24 Triathlon Los Angeles, $40,000 prize purse. Again, it's a 2021 USA Triathlon West Regional Championship. Now, is that for the uh, uh, international distance, Brendan, or is that for both? Correct. Just international. Just international. Okay. And then, so that's for international. You have a sprint try. Again, Venice Beach to LA Live. You journey through the heart of LA, a sprint relay, international. I, as I say this, I can see Brendan go, oh, I forgot about that one. Uh, <laughs> I didn't forget. It, it, it all works in the end, but you know, I guess you're the, the puppeteer as it comes together for the event to happen. And I love the fact that you're doing a 5k where all the money is going to juvenile diabetes research. And that's, that's really a cool addition. Yeah, I, I, JDRF, too. I mean, it's great, great partner over there. And it's like, you know, there's so many causes, you know, to help. And there's a number of executives within Herbalife who have children, you know, with type one. So one of the things I think that some people out there, especially in my 60 plus or 60 to death age group, uh, are are flocking to. <laughs> Wait, hang on a second. 60 to death? I have never heard that. <laughs> That's that my awesome. category, baby. Now it's 70 <laughs> to death. And so uh, ever, did I ever tell you that story? My favorite ever is uh, I was in a master swim meet and interviewing this 100-year-old guy who obviously had dominated everything. And I said, what's the key to your success? He goes, if you can't beat him, outlive him. So that became my philosophy. It's like, okay, I'm moving to my 10th age division, 70 years old. There's going to be less guys, man. I'm taking them all down. <laughs> but a lot of them are into aqua bike because, yeah. you know, rather than swim, bike, run, it's swim, bike, done, which I think is yeah. phenomenal, right? You don't <laughs> swim, bike, put your, put your sandals on it and go get a drink. You don't have to do that silly running stuff. 
Well, do walking is boring. I mean, eventually, you know, our bodies don't like running and walking. No. So I'm with you on that. Yeah. We can buy speed for swimming and buy speed for cycling, but you can't really, unless you're replacing knees, you really can't do much about that. Are you seeing growth in that? Because you're doing that in a number of events. There, 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 there is, you know, again, it's a, it's a category within a category, but it is growing over time, you know, and, there, and I always say it's usually, you know, men over 45, you know, they're like, hey, can we have an aqua bike? And I'm like, you know it. So, you know, it, which I, which I fit into. So I, I completely understand. So totally. Cause we want to be there, right. Yeah. You want, that's your social group and not yeah. being able to be out there. There's nothing better than our events for keeping, keeping you young because you're out there with all these amazing athletes like Heather and you get yeah. to hang out with them and you just did the same course they did, which yep. is really, really fun. So herbal life, 24 try dot LA. And you can sign up for any of these thousands of events that are going on. And if you wait a few days, Brennan will add something else. He'll add no more, no more this year. He's adding gravel. He's adding mountain bike. You can windsurf if you want, whatever the hell you want to do. That's what you do on, on your crazy, you know, triathlons like in Brazil. You always talk about, you know, whether it's hang gliding in and then you run bikes. So. Exactly. Hey, thank you both for taking time. Heather, you got second last time in this race. So uh, Brennan decided he'd add a few more athletes just so that you can make it a little more of a challenge when you go and win this herbal life 24 race thanks you guys for taking time always a pleasure and we will see you uh we'll see you late october you got it all right be well all yeah. all right thanks heather again breakfast with bob not quite cone edition thanks everybody for tuning in we'll catch you next time see ya <laughs>